What happened? Said Guru Dev is flower from his Guru Dev and spreading all over his mission and giving fragrance to all over the world. What for the Guru Dev told? His life, their life flowers. They are giving flowers of fragrance all over the world. So Guru Dev is giving fragrance of Christmas pastimes all over the world. By this day, so Guru Dev is spreading the mission of his Jiksha Guru Dev, Jiksha Guru God. So, Shri Guru Dev is from the work of his Guru Dev and Guru Nodao. And Otham Shri Guru Dev told if you check the stay off, then both will be there. Otham Shri Guru Dev is six times. Only Jyotisha Ban, Kile Kaki, Kashika Prishtas Chaiva, Saravidha Shrivaka Dhamma. Who are Kalishtra Shrivaka? Means Shrivaka Dhamma, Kalishtra Shrivaka. What is it? Even for the water anything, what is it? Only means they start from like one will be, he is taking soil, telling something none can understand. Then we should go to answer to Sahar Guru Dev, the order. Only Jyoti, oh, Guru Dev, you are telling me to go there if that man will not be there. What shall I do? Like, like, to the astrology. And so, then, when he get order of Guru Dev, he can stand. Guru Dev, I am not sure he will not do. Then so, when, when Guru Dev order, he run with me here. Hayat to go, what to go, what to perform, you forget everything. And he make a key. Oh Guru Dev, you are telling me there is no other realm. What can I do by alone? Another, Trishita, Trishita, Shaiva. Guru Dev told to one, he tell another, he tell another like it, it now never happened. So this is the type of art, Shaiva Katham. Among those we have so many, especially I am in this category. So I am praying Marthi of the Guru Dev and Bonafai to push now. Please bless you there Marthi, then one day I can fulfill the Guru Dev's desire. And if anything good of this, which I have heard from the Guru Dev, this day will go to the Guru Dev's daughter's feet, keep any wrong thing I have told, please excuse me, then I can rectify and pass the Guru eternally. Pansha Kalpa Karu Moshe Kipa, please do pray. Hello. Samar Mayatamunna Tojala Sabakishiyam. 
So they did two big things. So what is she? And Gurde, he is giving a wake-up call to the whole Goya Vaishnav community. That actually the purpose of uh, bhakti, this is to attain uh, this Unna Sojala Subhakti Shri, actually service to the pastimes of Shishi Radha and Krishna. Mm. So, mm. Shri Gurde has said that we should understand not only in relation to my Guru Maharaj, he said, you should know not only how tall the mountain is, you should know how deep the mountain is. How tall the mountain is means the glory of how he's achieved such amazing things, preaching in this world. And how deep the mountain is means what are his internal moods. So, although I'm not qualified, we can say something what we've heard from Srila Vishnu Chakrabhati Thakur and other Acharyas about the depth of the mountain. Sansara Dhavana Lalita Loka. Externally, the spiritual master, he's visiting the conditioned souls and he's extinguishing the fire, blazing fire of material existence, saving us from birth and death. But for those who are already perfected, he's giving them the consolation of his pure Harikata and engaging them in their constitutional service in Braj. Mahaprabhu Kirtana Mitra Gita. So he is bringing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's beautiful mission of Sankirtan. Harinama Sankirtan, Premadana. It's coming from Golo Kera Premadana, Harinama Sankirtan. So he's engaging us in chanting and dancing, and he himself is chanting and dancing in this Sankirtan movement. Our Sri Gurudev, unfortunately, we don't see him chanting and dancing so much these days. But previously, he was most prominent Kirtanir in Gaudiya so in theory, <laughs> internally the associates with Krishna, they have two sarus, one in Krishna Lila and another in Gora Lila. So Gurudev also in Gora Lila, he's engaged in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan pastimes, which is not different from Rasa Lila. And he's dancing in ecstasy with Mahaprabhu and his associates. Siddhigrahara Dhana Nitya Lila, Nitya so, Gurudev is engaging his disciples in deity worship, in dressing and decorating Vigraha, Shri Vigraha, and cleansing the temple. And Sri uh, Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur, as our Acharya is describing how Sri Guru, uh, Guru Saki, for example, in the morning, when it comes time to wake up Radha Krishna, so they're coming in and they're dressing Shri Vigraha in the Kunja, Nikunja in his beautiful, wish-fulfilling temples, beautiful, wish-fulfilling trees, decked with flowers and jewels and birds and mm, sweet breeze like this. So, and then cleaning the temple, collecting up the broken pearl necklaces and all these other beautiful engagements. Chaturvidha Shri Bhagavad Prasad. So Sri the Guru and he's giving us Bhagavad Prasad. Ah, this is my Guru Maharaj, so this is our secret weapon, Prasadam. So we just defeat him Prasadam, so many and becoming purified, getting paid for uh, service, and get also getting moved for bright service, through prasad. And Gurudev is described how the Saki to Srimati Radhika, they're going through Nandagam, when Krishna is taking evening prasad. So Krishna is tasting, and Dalita is keeping some remnants. And then Jashoda Mai also, she's taking some of the Amritali and other dishes that Krishna has uh, had, had and then Saki is mixing two from Danisa from Yashodamaya and then they're taking back to Shimati Radhika and Java and Java and all the uh, devotees are tasting and full ecstasy and then uh, Saki becomes so happy Sri Radhika then uh, pure devotee is always he always wants to remember the past times of Shri Radha Madhav uh, and he's engaging his disciples in remembering that past time of Shri Mata. Guru Dev is saying, when you're chanting Hare Krishna, you remember the past time of Radha Krishna. And internally, we know that the Sakis, uh, secretly they're meeting, for example, at the time of Venuji is describing. So secretly they're meeting and they're discussing meetings of the uh, past time of Krishna in small, small groups. Or when Krishna goes into the forest, so, when he disappears and the Sakis are coming out back and just hide their tears, they go into the kitchen and they put wet wood on the fire. And then the whole kitchen fills with smoke. And they're crying and crying and crying. 
And they don't even consider, why are you crying? Oh, this is I was so And it's like they're hiding their longing to remember Radha and Krishna's past. You could say, you know Radha Kedi Sitai. See, Gurudev, it's not just reading about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, or just remembering Radha, but Radha Kedi Sitai is perfecting the pastimes. These pastimes cannot go on without the uh, intervention, without participation by these sakis. So, Krishna's most important quality is his unlimited mercy on the fallen conditioned soul. And Gurudev is the personification of that mercy. He's the personification of Krishna's potency which makes the impossible possible. It's impossible for fallen conditioned souls to take up fresh bhakti. It's absolutely impossible. And Gurudev comes to make that possible by his limitless love and extreme expertise, loving expertise, how to change the poisoned heart to the fallen conditioned soul. And internally, oh we hear, Shiksha Guru Keto Jani Krishna Saru, Saru means it's the internal potency, the real nature of Krishna. Shimati Radhika Saki, they're in relationship pranoi. Shimati Radhika Saru Shakti, she's a very the very essence of Krishna, what is Harita? Harita, the, the nature of Krishna is to rasa vaitaha, to enjoy ras. What ras? Braj ras. What braj ras? Ujjala ras. Or what ujjala ras? Means pastimes to Srimati Radhika. Those pastimes cannot take place without the help of the Saki. So therefore, Tatsadari Prena, Manasya Shastra. Yasya Prasara Bhagavad Prasara. Yasya Prasara Nagati Kitoki. If Krishna, if, if Gurudev is pleased, like Sri Gurudev explained the other night, that if Krishna is angry, Guru can save you. At one time, one devotee had offended Ram, so he took shelter of Hanuman. Then Ram came to kill the devotee, and Hanuman stood like that, oh, you have to kill me first. So if Krishna is angry, Gurudev can save you, but if Guru is angry, nobody can save you. So you have prasada, Bhagavad prasada. Yitya Prasara Nagati Kitoki, there's no advancement if Gurudev is not pleased. So, we hear how, ah, if Srimati Radhika is in mind, to increase Krishna's eagerness, she's refusing to see him. Don't let that black fellow into the culture. And Lali is saying, don't relent, don't give up. So Krishna comes, he's so eager to see Srimati Radhika. But the Saki is there at the door, no, you can't come in. How? Asaki said, you can't come. No, please, please. He's pleading. And then he's flattering them with so many beautiful words and praises. Melting their hearts. Falling in their lotus feet, actually. Finally, their hearts melting. They go to see Shimati Radhika and say, oh, this Krishna is come. He's dying. He's literally dying to see you. Uh, so, give your prasada, Bhagavad prasada. If Saki is pleased, then Bhagavan himself can make some advancement. And in fact, he is not pleased, yet uh, Krishna himself can make no advancement. So, uh, so a guru is so potent, both in material world and in the spiritual world, he's so potent. Uh, so I take shelter of the lotus feet of such a potent devotee of the Lord. In UK, when somebody has a birthday, we say, many happy returns of the day. So I wish that Kurde will have many happy returns of this day. Yeah. Happy returns, because he Kurde is on a mission. He wants to see so many devotees understanding this beautiful truth that he's giving and realizing. And also he wants to see, oh, wonderful preaching mission, as in the days of our Guru Maharaj. So much enthusiasm. So I'm praying that I can be one of those devotees who will please him by understanding and realizing these beautiful truths that he's giving and also by taking part in a, an amazing display, a regeneration of pure mood of preaching. So I bow down at the lotus feet of my beloved Shikshiguru. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
ഓം ജ്ഞാനത്തിനന്തസ്യ ജനാഞ്ജന സ്വലക്കയ First of all, I want to offer my most humble obeisances many millions of times at the Lotus feet of my Diksha Guru, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Sila Pabhita. And then again, offer my most humble obeisances millions of times at the Lotus feet of my Shikshya Guru, C.C. Mahal Bhaktivedanta Naraya Maharaj. Shri Narayan Das Thakur has written Shri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhaktisa So the lotus feet the feet of the Guru are compared to lotus Why the feet of the Guru are compared to lotus My first Shikshya Guru Shri Gauravinda Swami Maharaj used to say that in Ayurvedic medicine when one has an eye disease in which they cannot see properly then the honey which is collected by the bees exclusively from the lotus flower will be applied to the eyes and this medicine will cure the incorrect vision of the eyes So the feet of the Guru are called Padma, Lotus feet, Sarana Padma, because by the application of this Padma Madhu, the honey, the nectar coming from this Padma, then the defective material vision of the eyes of the Shishu will be corrected and they will get Jivya Drishti. Jivya Gyan. Jivya Gyan Ride Prokashito, which is injected directly into the heart of the Shishu. Jivya Gyan Ride Prakashito. Where does it come? How does it go into the heart of the Shishu? Guru Mukha Padma Bhaktiya. From the mouth. From the lotus mouth of Sri Guru, the transcendental sound vibration enters into the heart of the disciple. And how is this accomplished? This is explained in 4th canto, 20th chapter, 25th verse. Maharaj Prithu is praying to Lord Vishnu that you please bless me and benedict me that I may always hear the transcendental sound vibration from the lotus mouth of the pure Vaishnav, the pure Sadhus. Because it is just like saffron particles, the aroma of saffron particles, which cleanses my heart of all material misgivings. Now in the purport, Sri Prabhupada talks about this. He says, what is it that makes the voice of the spiritual master, which sounds like an ordinary material sound vibration, what makes the voice powerful? What gives it transcendental power? Sri Prabhupada says that when the spiritual master speaks, the sound vibration goes across the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead within the heart of the Guru and collects the aroma of the saffron particles which are on the lotus feet of the Lord. And these aroma of the saffron particles is carried on the voice of the Guru and enters into the heart of the disciple. Divya Gyan Ride Prokashita Entering into the heart of the disciple. So, what is the saffron particle? What is the aroma of the saffron particle? This is a very interesting point because in the verse it says Shuddha Kana and when Shuddha Prabhupada translates the verse word for word Shuddha Kana is translated as nectar particles. But when he translates it in the verse in English and in the purport, he says, saffron particles. So I was thinking about this one day and I wrote to Srila Gurudev that this saffron particle, does this represent Sarup Shakti? Does this represent Srimati Radhika? And he told me yes, this is correct. So in this way, this is the injection of Sarup Shakti. Srila Sattva Vishe Shatma. How this Sarup Shakti is injected into the heart from the lotus mouth of the Guru. 
by this process of hearing the transcendental sound vibration from his lotus lips. Can the aroma of saffron particles ever be captured on a tape recorder or in a book? I don't know of any mechanism that will capture this aroma of saffron particles. I have not seen it, either on the printing press or on the tape recorder. Does that mean we should not hear the tapes of the transcendental lectures of the Guru or read the books? I asked this question in 2003 when I first finally decided after so many years to surrender at the feet of the Gurudev and take his shiksha. And he told me, Dear, you are properly following under the guidance of the pure devotee. Then when you read the books of your Guru Maharaj and hear his face, then you will hear his voice and you will get the transcendental benefit. In other words, one must be under the guidance. Second canto, third chapter, 30, 24th verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada states, the progressive march back home, back to Godhead, will be determined by how one studies the Vedic literature under the direct guidance of the realized soul. And in the first canto, first chapter, sixth verse in the purport, hearing and explaining the revealed hearing and explaining the revealed scriptures is more important than reading them. One can assimilate one can assimilate the knowledge of the revealed scriptures only by the process of hearing and explaining. And the word assimilation is very significant. It means the transformation of food into living tissue. How does one assimilate the knowledge of revealed scriptures? Knowledge means to understand the difference between matter and spirit and the control of both. But how does one assimilate it into ecstasy? In order to assimilate it into ecstasy, one must get these saffron particles. Just like in Ayurveda, Madhurya Ras, there is Rasa, Virya, and Deepak. There are six tastes. Sweet, salty, sour, pungent, bitter, astringent. And for each taste, there is a tasting on the tongue, there is a virya, an experience of energetic within the body, and deepak, how the tissues of the body will taste and transform the nutrients into the living tissue of the body. So, Madhurya Ras means sweet, and sweetened condensed milk is a very nice product which one likes to drink and enjoy. But in order to absorb the Madhurya Ras of sweet condensed milk, one has to add saffron. Because saffron will break down the lactic acid and lactose acid and also help to improve the assimilation of the nutrients into the cells and tissues of the body. So just like this saffron will take the sweet and condensed Madhurya Ras and help it to be digested by the tissues of the body and assimilated. Similarly, hearing the transcendental sound vibration, the aroma of the saffron particles from the lotus lips of the pure devotee, helps one to assimilate this Madhurya Ras. Otherwise, if one tries to taste this Madhurya Ras without hearing the transcendental sound vibration from the lotus lips of the pure devotee under his guidance, one will get indigestion. <laughs> so, there is a great spiritual treasure in the heart of the pure devotion. And if one wants to access that treasure, prema bhakti jaha hoite, avidya vinasha joite. When the pure devotee speaks, about this Madhurya Ras, huh? then it enters into the heart. Prema Bhakti, Kiryagam Rige Prophecy, enters directly into the heart and Ridro, the disease, huh? Pratilabhya, it enters into the heart and the Ridro is destroyed. The disease of the lust for material life and this material body is destroyed. So this is the power of the pure devotee, but how will you access that treasure? One must become loyal. One must be very loyal to that personality whom he takes shelter of. 
In this Anushivanam, Krishna Anushivanam, in this verse, Anu also means Anugatya, under the guidance, under the direct guidance. And if you want to be under the guidance, and you want to access the treasure of such a great Mahabhagava, such a great intimate associate of Srimati Radharani, then one must remain loyal. This loyalty is best seen in the dog. In America, there is a phrase, sold out dog. One must become the sold out dog of the Guru. The dog, when it is trained properly, he will not eat unless the master feeds him. He will stay awake all night to protect the master's house if the master requires. If the master does not let him out to relieve his uh, bodily functions, he will not relieve his bodily functions until he is permitted to go out. In this way the dog, and if the master becomes angry and beats the dog, he accepts. Whatever the master does, the dog accepts, but if anyone were to try to do any harm to the master, the dog will lay down his life immediately to protect the master. Unless one becomes a sold out dog to the Guru, one cannot access the treasure of his heart. This is the mood that one must have to express it. One must have in order to access it and obtain it. We should understand, as Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in the Bhakti Tattva today, that even if one is duly initiated by a bona fide guru in Acharya, in a bona fide Vaishnava Sampradaya, but he has not attained his Vastu Prabha, his spiritual identity, then he must obtain the spiritual identity from the Shiksha Guru. And, in order to obtain the spiritual identity from the Shiksha Guru, the particular Shiksha Guru that you decide to obtain it from, you must show your loyalty and your love and your affection. Seeing in him, seeing in him, the whole Guru Parampara. And just as you have this loyalty and love and affection for the Guru, you must also understand to have this loyalty and love and affection for all those who are also serving the Guru and trying to obtain the same treasure. It is only by this kind of love and trust among each other, as we see in Shaitanya Charge and Rita, where all of the different devotees of Lord Shaitanya are constantly serving each other in, in order to serve Mahaprabhu, that we come to develop gradually more and more love and trust in the pure devotee and in the process of achieving this pure devotional service and this treasure from the heart of the Guru. So on this day, which is Sri Guru Dev's appearance day, in America it is usually the tradition to give gifts to a person on their birthday. But in India we see that on Krishna's birthday, Nanda Maharaj was giving so many gifts to everyone on the birthday of his son. So I am humbly requesting that Sri Guru Dev please give his most heartly blessings to all of the assembled devotees here today that they should get the treasure of his heart.
So, I'm not qualified to speak in front of so many great stalwarts, Vaishnava and Vaishnavis, which have already spoken about Guru Tattva in such a wonderful way. Only I know that by Guru Dev's mercy, because he has been empowered by the Sau Shakti of Lord Krishna, this is Shumati Radharani. He is the master of all living entities. He is the absolute servant of Krishna. Krishna has actually two functions. He is absolute master and also he is absolute servant. And the Guru is functioning as the absolute servant. As such, he is reflecting in every living entity. And whoever reflects Shri Aguruja is the most, he is also a helper, a ashraya for, for us. So we are surrounded by Gurudev and his the most disciples and this chapter is our most auspicious, is the most auspicious place where one can be in the world. So being surrounded by Gurudev, one has to be an owl in order not to understand his heart desires. The owl closes his eyes during the night, during the day, and if you ask the owl where is the sun, it will say there is no sun. But with Gurudev nearby, in our heart, outside, everywhere, in our mind, in our ears, in our heart, then we cannot say that we haven't seen or heard anything about the Krishna or the Sun, the spiritual Sun. So there was an example of how Shri Sri Guru liked to like to like his disciples to behave according to his will. There was a sannyasi which was a disciple, very close disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarabhati Thakur. And he used to uh, entertain, not entertain, but he used to take care of some rehashed couples nearby and preaching to them and uh, regularly taking some uh, donations from them. And he would keep this money and regularly he would go and see Shilabha Kishidanta Sarasati Thakur and talk about his service and give this money. So one day Shilabha Kishidanta Sarasati Thakur near his uh, terms, term in, his, in this world and his life, he called upon his sannyasi and he told him, actually you have never met me. You have never seen me. You have been doing all these things on my back, thinking that by giving me some money under the table, you could buy my consentment. But actually, you have never served me. So you don't know who I am, and you have never met me, so your life is not successful, I am not happy with you. So first of all, you should become mine. You should be my disciple. You should do whatever I want you to do, nothing more than that. Then at that time, if you surrender to my desire, then you will be able to do whatever you like to do, whatever you have to do in the world, with money, with people, with position, anything. But unless and until you completely surrender to my will, then you will not be able to be successful in spiritual life. So this example shows that without the uh, consentment, the aval, that means the mercy of Guru, nobody can make any progress. Although you can think I'm doing so much services, I'm fully engaged 24 hours a day, and my service is very successful because people respond accordingly. But still, if Guru is not pleased, then the service will be completely and totally deprived of any value. 
So we have to be very, very careful when we deal about devotional service. Because Guru is the master of all living entities, is the master of his disciples, and is the only one who can engage the disciple in devotional service. He is himself the master of devotional service. That means he is never deprived of devotional service. But we are not allowed to do devotional service until Guru allows us to do it. So he has the faculty, he has the power to allow us to do devotional service or to dissolve, to desire us to do devotional service. So we have nothing, no other alternative to completely surrender unto the Lord's feet of Shri Guru Dev. So today I have told my life story. So I'm trying to uh, please Guru Dev by asking him whether how can I please him and how can I serve his meet him and uh, meet his heart desires and he bless me that I can change my heart and become a completely for a, a, a surrendered dog as his own. Because we have 
your personal presence is here. Actually, Gurudev say, my real birthday has to celebrate the day when I received Bhakti Vijayam from my spiritual master, Mr. Ila Pravista, on this path, Bhakti Pragyanta Sakusvami Maharaj. The advent of our Gurudev is called Vyas Puja. The other common day known Guru Purnima, day is in the month of June, July. The services of Goliama, knowing the spiritual master, are no different in truth from Lord Vyas. Every year celebrate his advent at Vyasa Puja. Lord Goranga Mahaprabhu established this worship of Vyasa Puja through Sri Kananda Prabhu and Sri Sangha Mayapur. The word Vyasa means divide or in another sense to expand. The complete Vedas were divided in four parts by him, Rit, Sama, Jajura, Sava and also worked by Mahabharata and Pugana, extended by the Muni, Sri Krishna Vaisa and Vyasa. Similar, Gurudev performs this seva, O Sri Vyasa Dev, and delivering this knowledge to us. For this reason, the adorations offered to him on his advent are called Vyasa Puja. The other part of Vyasa Puja is in offering every, everything to service of the spiritual master in the work conduct to the fulfillment of his wishes. Our presence our spiritual master Silanara Sanda Thakur and his offering has humble prayer. Sri Chaitanya Manovishan Savikan Yanabutare Saya Bru Makadamayan Dhatisvanapka. My dear Vaishnavas and Vaishnavik I am really don't know how to understand the Manovishta of my good girl. Please help me to one day to try to understand, to fulfill his desires. One day we feel orphans, but thanks to his continuity and also called controversy that arose in the end of the 20th century. Because in that way, the concept of Vyasa, a divine and expander, the real meaning of the Vyasa Puja, was given again from your holy lips. Bhakti Kalapata Vyasa 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 Kalapata